Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are a pragmatic person, practical in your orientation, today's readings may make you wonder, what's the point? What am I supposed to do? How do they help me? Do me any good? How am I supposed to understand them? How am I supposed to apply them to my life? Well, sometimes expecting immediate use for everything is a bit short-sighted. Trying to use everything immediately doesn't always make sense. There are some things that we need simply to ponder on and reflect upon before they make sense in the big scheme of things. This is especially true for the contents of Holy Scripture. Some years ago, and there are at least some of you here who will remember seeing that, the TV series Roots, back in the 70s, got many people thinking about their heritage. And since that time, exploring our family tree has become quite common and popular these days. And I suspect many of you here today have done some work exploring your family tree and your roots. We want to know our story, our family story, and our history. And it's important that we as Christians know the church's family story. That story that tells us who we are and whose we are. And the transfiguration that we celebrate today is part of that story. This is one of many memory sites for Christians. And so we see Jesus here in a blaze of glory with Moses, with Elijah. We see Jesus, the light of the world, shining forth in all his glory and splendor. And this is a preview of his resurrection glory that will come after his journey to Jerusalem, to Calvary, and the grave. Before long, he will be positioned between two criminals on a cross. He goes to the cross in order to bring us, you and me, into God's forgiving light. And he gives his glory and his light to those who trust, to those who follow him. The words we heard in today's gospel, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We heard those earlier in the gospel, in the third chapter at Jesus' baptism, and they're repeated here. But today we hear something else, something more, because after the father says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, we hear the father say, Listen to him. Listen to him. This is, on the one hand, an invitation of grace. So when you and when I feel ashamed or defeated, unworthy, useless, listen to Jesus. Listen to Jesus, the light of the world, because he assures us, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. What we can't achieve, our own forgiveness, everlasting peace, what we can't do, he gives us as his gift. That's his grace, his love showered upon us. Our Lord Jesus claims us, you and me, to be his brothers and sisters. 
Because of our Lord Jesus, you and I are called children of God, sons and daughters of God. We were adopted as God's children beginning in holy baptism by the Heavenly Father. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. It's not only an invitation of grace, but it's a command. We tend not to like commands, especially when they come from others. But Jesus, the giver, calls us to respond. He says, come, follow me. It's interesting to see how his disciples react here on this Mount of Transfiguration. It's pretty obvious as you look at the Gospel reading that they really don't know what's going on and they really don't know what to make of it. At first they thought it was great and wanted to stay there. Peter says, let's build some tents, let's stay here and continue to enjoy this wonderful moment. But then they heard the Father's voice, and they became fearful of what they heard. It sounded scary to them. And so that's why they had to descend from the mount and spend more time with Jesus, day in and day out, till they began to fully understand what he was all about and what their calling was. That kind of misunderstanding that they demonstrated here and many other times in the Gospels so often happens to me and you, doesn't it? We don't really understand what Jesus wants us to do and to be in a certain situation. Our responses then are often like Peter, James, and John here. At first, what we hear from Jesus sounds great, wonderful. We want to hear words of acceptance, of love. We want to hear words of welcome that Jesus gives us. But the call to sacrifice, service, obedience, not so much. But our Lord Jesus said, whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. That means we're to respond, to respond willingly to him in love, in joy, in gratitude. Wouldn't we rather have him satisfy our desires and our wishes than follow him? That's why we need to spend more time with him to know the difference between what we really need and what we really ask for. We need to spend time with Jesus, you and me, a lot more time, so we understand really what he is all about and what we are to do as his followers. Our Lord descends from this display of glory on his way to the cross's humiliation. Glory to disgrace. But on the way, and this is not in our gospel reading, this takes place after the text ends for today. In the following verses, as Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, with that mission clearly in mind, he nevertheless takes time to heal a father's son. He allows his goal, his path, to be interrupted or to be stopped momentarily to take care of somebody in need, this father and his ailing son. And looking at that, that gives us a hint as to what some of the practical results are for you and for me if, if we are transformed by the light of Christ. As Jesus did, so we are to do. We follow Jesus to be agents of his healing and his help and his caring to others.
We allow our lives sometimes to be interrupted as we reach out to take care of those in need. We become agents of his light and love and forgiveness. That's the practical outcome of spending time on the mountain of transfiguration as we do this morning. We do as Jesus did as we live out our lives. We listen to the needs and situations of others like Jesus did. We listen to them and rejoice with them in their joys. We listen and are available to them in their pain and in their suffering, as Jesus did. So, who do you know that needs a healing touch, a helping touch of care and comfort? Who do you know that needs you to be Jesus' agent of love and care? Our response to those who are in the, in the darkness of need and pain, our response will show if, in fact, we have been transformed by the transfigured Christ. It will show if we have been enlightened by the light of Christ. May God grant that to you and to me as we follow Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.